Hey guys, Free Marlow Chip here, also known as Free Chip on RC Groups. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Spectrum DX8 transmitter to use with your, your NASA M multi rotor flight controller. In this video, I'll be programming my model using a blank acro model and explain each system setup and functionless menu option you need to change in order to get set up correctly and make it easy for you to get flying quickly. Just a reminder for those watching and wanting to follow these steps that the menu options and setup used here are based on a specific receiver to NASA M servo connection. The following is based on having the NASA M U port connected to your receiver gear channel, the X1 connected to the AUX1, and the X2 connected to the AUX2. Also, for those of you who may have already watched uh, my DX9 programming video, you'll notice minor differences here and that's because the DX8 has minor limitations and programming differences versus the higher transmitters from Spectrum. Alright, so let's get started. Since my radio is already turned on, all I got to do is press the roller selector, scroll down to system setup, confirm the system menu access, and we're now in the system setup. Now we're going to scroll down to model select and we're going to pick our available model that we want to use. In this case I'll just pick model 1. And this brings us back to the system setup. Regardless if I'm picking a new model I've never used before, I always select model type. This allows me to be sure that there's no programming in there in the event I had played with this model memory before in the past. So we're going to go ahead and pick our model type and in this case airplane the data will be reset will confirm yes okay so now we're going to pick our model name here if you want to if you want to clear one letter all you got to do is press clear once and if you want to erase the entire name you press clear again and now we can just press back. Since DGI recommends we use the um, default airplane model type we won't need to be changing anything in the uh, wing type. So we're just going to go ahead and pick uh, our switch select menu. Here in the switch select menu we need to assign the channels we're using with the NASA to the proper switches. In this case the gear channel we need to assign to our F mode switch. The AUX1 channel we're going to be using for remote gain or gimbal tilt. We want to assign it to the knob. And AUX2 is going to be used for IOC which requires a three position switch and we're going to leave it assigned to the AUX2. Next we're going to scroll down to warning. Here we're just going to go ahead and, and disable the throttle warning to help us later when we go and bind our receiver. And now we're done with the system setup. And we can go ahead and back out to our main model. Okay, now that we're done with the system setup programming, we're going to go ahead and start our functionless programming. And we're going to start with servo setup. In the servo setup menu, we got a few changes we need to make. In order for the gear channel to properly line up with GPS, attitude, and manual, we need to adjust the travel for it. In this case, we need to bring it down to about 85%. We also need to do the same for the IOC channel, in this case is auxiliary 2. We're going to be bringing it down to about 90%. The next thing we're going to change is our channel reversing. In the uh, NASA Assistant, with both control sticks down and to the left, the sliders in the NASA Assistant should all be pointing to the left. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up our radio so that the same is 
displayed in our, our radio. And as you can see, we need to reverse the aileron channel and the rudder channel. So we're going to go ahead and pick the aileron, and we're going to reverse it, and we're going to pick the rudder, and we're going to reverse it. So as you can see now, with both sticks down and to the left, the sliders here are pointing to the left. It's going to be the same thing in your NASA Assistant. So now we're done here for now, so we'll back out. Then we'll go down to Dual Rate and Expo. In the Dual Rate and Expo menu, you don't need to do anything here for the NASA to work properly, but I like to use a little Expo with all my models. So in this case, what we're going to do for all the channels is I'm going to pick a switch selection that's always on. And for the ailerons, I'm going to pick about 30% Expo, and I'm going to do this for the remaining elevator and rudder channel. Next, we're going to scroll down to mixing, and we're going to pick a blank mix. The mix that we're going to be creating is one that we're going to use to trigger the NASA to go into failsafe, and when you're using a compass, um, it will cause the NASA to return home and auto land. So what we need to do is, since the NASA failsafe is controlled via the U port, which is connected to our gear channel of our receiver. We need to create a mix with the gear channel to force the gear channel to go to a specific position. So in this case what we want to do is we want to pick gear as our master input and we also want to pick gear as our slave output. Now ultimately what we want to do since our flight mode switch controls our gear channel we want to prevent that switch from actually um, controlling that channel. So what you do is once you've, you've picked the master and slave, we're going to pick a minus 100 value for both positions. And you're going to see now that the channel is centering. Now that we've done this, you can you can see I'm toggling or you can hear I'm toggling my fly mode switch and the gear the gear channel is no longer moving, which is what we want. But what we want now is we want to force the gear channel slightly off. In this case, we want to move it to around 82 uh, 42%, which is in the NASA assistant will highlight the fail safe mode. So what we do now is we offset the mix by 50%, which is going to position our gear channel perfectly for failsafe in the NASA Assistant. And now we just need to assign the switch we want to use, and in this case, with the DX8, I use a Mix 1. So now we're done creating our failsafe mix, and we're going to back out of this menu. So at this point, we're pretty much done programming our radio for use with the NASA. You can make a few changes to the timer and stuff like that but that will all be based on your model and the type of battery you're using. Now that we're done programming our DX8 radio be sure to check out the next video where I'll show you how to prep your radio for binding, put your receiver into preset failsafe bind and connect to the NASA assistant where we will confirm that all the programming we just created is working as it should. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up. For a complete guide, SPM file, and additional information, please check out my website. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.